NFTs are branching out beyond collectibles and art to real world utility from patents and hotel exclusives to using your NFT as collateral for loans. It's getting interestinger and interestinger. We're also pleased to welcome the one and only Super Doge to the show to talk about the animated cartoon series that we'll all soon be talking about. We're here to save the world one NFT at a time on our Nifty News episode number 109 of The Nifty Show. Looking into the future, what do we see? It's lined with digital collectibles, we call them NFTs. Games, trading cards, digital art, and those crypto kitties. Joel and Zach are the hosts you'll know. Joel and Zach say this will blow. They're locked and loaded, so ready, set, go! It's the Nifty, really kind of spiffy. The Nifty Show. Greetings, friends, family, acquaintances, frenemies, my son. Hi, Zach. Hello. Welcome to the Nifty Show. This is our news episode, which is peppered with an interview, which is news in and of itself. Episode number 109. We're glad you're here. And the uh, a segment of the NFT world is explodifying, and that is the wax world can't say we didn't tell you we're going to talk about that we've got an interview for you today we've got news and we're going to jump right in here with this very first story and this week i'm going to remember to share my screen for those of you watching the video version on youtube the nft bazl partners with the sls south beach to offer first ever hotel exclusive nfts uh, it's a lot of acronyms right there, but NFT BAZL calls themselves the world leading NFT marketplace. I don't know if that's true or not. I think everybody positions themselves as that, but there's a hotel owned by SLS in South Beach, Miami, and uh, they are coming up with NFTs of their own for guests of the hotel. Hotel rewards programs have been a thing for a long time, and there's all sorts of perks that are associated with, shall we say, frequent stays, but this is definitely unprecedented, a new it, one, now that you have provable ownership. Really interesting, because I was doing an interview this morning with somebody interviewing me for their podcast, and I was just talking about how loyalty and rewards are the you know the entry point for a lot of these brands to get involved we've seen some brands come out with nfts you know coke did a revolving coke machine and i think some fast food chains have put out some nfts but they're really just like hey we got to do this nft thing because everybody's talking about it it's hot right now in nft buy our burgers and fries nft a fry them and but the real utility is going to come in the form of of loyalty perks vip memberships exclusive access that is what nft basil bazl is uh, intending to do in this partnership with sls south beach i could see this being really fun for establishing tiers of membership level that are non-transferable right so you have a, a non-transferable non-fungible token that denotes Oh, yeah, I have stayed with this hotel five times now, so I'm this particular loyalty rank, and I can just flash that to a staff member, and, and they know that I'm entitled to whatever privilege I'm pestering them for. So this first partnership um, features a live DJ performance, mural painting, physical and digital masterpieces, in addition to showcasing the first-in-class NFT chips, tying the digital token to a physical piece of art and memorabilia. I like my chips crunchy, so I'm not exactly sure what kind of chips these are going to be. How much fun. It seems like it's not any surprise that this particular organization was responsible since just last month, their Dubai branch, uh, they, they had an event uh, where they partnered with Samsung and there were over 400 VIPs there in Dubai. Hmm. The I've not seen this site before, NFT Basil but it's nftbasil.com and uh, you can look through here and see the things that they're up to, but it looks like it is an NFT gallery. That's what they're up to. It's a, it's an art gallery. So very cool. So many people doing things in the space. It's nearly impossible to keep up. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering why Zach's audio might not be on point and his video looks like he's in a hotel room, it's cause he is, and he is uh, visiting right now in Puerto Rico. 
and will soon be joining me here. Uh, well, actually, he'll be on the other side of the island, but he's he's moving as well. Yes, it's going to be a very exciting transition, and my hands are full with that on top of everything else that we are doing, uh, both individually and as a team. We are doing very many things. Deutsche Welle, Germany's most popular international broadcaster and independent media platform, has minted its first NFT in the form of a video, and it's an effort to support freedom of the press. Proceeds of the auction will go to reporters without Borders, a non-governmental organization documenting violations of press freedom globally and supporting persecuted journalists. Um, I have much to say about freedom of the press, but I'll just, I'll leave it in. I'm for it. <laughs> journalists that have, have faced real prosecution, actually being silenced by governments, actually being imprisoned, especially away from their own homes, very serious problem. So mm -hmm. this as though it is definitely for a good cause which is always lovely to see i would like to see the actual art itself if they're showing it here to see what it is okay this is kind of interesting so that is kind of interesting yeah this is this is a fun nft uh, very clever you need to go take a look at this but this is a great little animation and it's definitely got a international flair uh, I, I like this click. I'm going to put the actual link to the NFT itself for those of you that aren't watching into the show notes so that you can see the NFT itself. Because me likey, me likey the NFT. Good luck uh, to these guys as they auction this off. Uh, what's happening next uh, there? I almost called you Travis, Zach, Zachis, as we move into the NFTs becoming real world utility sector. NFTs for patents does seem like a rather obvious use case once you start to think about it. If the whole concept of a patent is that someone is receiving permanent credit for being the first to innovate something, then recording that they were the first to innovate something on blockchain sounds almost like a no-brainer. Right. I mean, a, a patent uh, requires an immutable record of when it was created and an indisputable proof of ownership, which is what blockchain does only better. And the really cool thing about it is how simple would it be to then transfer this patent to another person? Just transfer the NFT, whether, you know, you sell it or auction it or whatever you say, I own the, the patent to this. It's in the form of an NFT and no middleman required. Uh, you, you now own it. Have patents ever changed hands before? Yeah, patents are sold. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, that's news to me. Yeah. I mean, people buy patents all the time. It's, it's, it's ownership. It's just, it's another asset that, uh, that can be owned. Now there's a record of it, of who initially, you know, filed it and uh, received that patent, but companies do this all the time. They secure patents. So. Interesting. Yeah, very cool. So this is also cool because there is a, um, a company called now.gg and they're launching NFT monetization for none other than game developers. That's got to excite you a little bit. Yeah, it, apparently now.gg is a sister company to Bluestacks. Bluestacks is one of the foremost Android emulators. It is basically a virtual... Um, imaginary Android that you run on a PC, which allows for you to play and test mobile applications as if you were testing them on a smartphone, which has a surprising number of uses. Uh, but in particular, I want to highlight the 95% part of this headline because 95% revenue cut is absolutely unheard of for developers on major platforms. I think that Steam offers a 30-70 a deal with 30% going to Steam, and Epics is only somewhat better than that. So this is incredibly favorable for anybody who is seeking to develop on mobile. Mm, good place for developers to escape. NFT-based monetization via marketplace, NFT gift cards, NFT fan art, all kinds of ways for developers to make money from users who currently aren't paying anything to, uh, to use the games to play the games that they've got right there. Have you ever seen this one here? Shop Titans. I have, I know of it. Yes. 
So it's one of the games that uses now GG. They're on track here, according to this article from VentureBeat, to have over a billion minutes of games played on its platform within the year. So it looks like they're getting ready to take off. GG, now GG. GG, indeed. Mm -hmm. Here, here's some more practical application. I mean, this the show is just chock full. Good job, producer Aaron, on finding these stories for us today. In South Africa, NFT Fi has raised five million dollars for an initiative that will allow people to use their NFTs as collaterals for loans. Now, that's I mean, these things have real value, and people are finding ways to uh, to get liquidity without actually having to sell them. I'm going to borrow from uh, from this lender, and I'm going to secure the NFT into a smart contract. And when I pay back the loan, I receive the uh, the NFT back. And if you don't pay back the loan, guess what? Your crypto punk is mine, bitches. This could actually be uh, especially liberating if the value of the NFT is only considered at the moment that it is put out for collateral, since obviously the value of these NFTs goes up and down even while they are sitting in the possession of the debtor. So, hmm. If the debtors don't care, then it sounds almost too good to be true. It sounds incredibly easy. Yeah. So I've actually, the site is nftfi.com, uh, the marketplace for NFT. Collect so it's not just Africa. It's like anybody, it appears, were allowed by law. Put your NFT assets up as collateral for a loan or offer loans to other users on their non-fungible tokens. So you could loan to other people. Hmm. Interesting. So many ways to skin this mutant cat. And it always takes some serum is my understanding for that. <laughs> I, I like this. We have a nation, an actual country, an island here in the Caribbean, not too far from where we are now. Barbados is establishing an embassy in Decentraland, the first sovereign territory in the central land will be uh will be barbados and uh, hard to choose a more beautiful place to do it it's it's gorgeous there this increasing move this pattern of governments acknowledging the legitimacy of the digital space as a place to make official things happen is bigger than I think most people understand. And of course it's starting with smaller nations because they're more agile and they have a bit less to lose when they take actions like this. But I think that this is, this is really pushing us towards a new digital standard. It's going to be expected in rel the relatively near future that you'll be able to do most, if not all of the things that you need to do when interacting with the state in meat space in the digital in the digital world just don't try to take your driving test uh purely online we do need to see you behind the wheel for those all right what grand theft auto 5 doesn't apply <laughs> have you seen me driving grand theft auto 5 take away unfortunately that yes take away that license so this uh barbados sees the metaverse as the next frontier according to the piece on nftplazas.com a new nft news site at least new to me a place to converge learn plan and connect with people from nations across the planet embassies will provide an interaction point for metaverse travelers and allow for a tangible presence in virtual and physical worlds i love it way to go barbados i want a virtual hammock it, the Barbados Embassy, where I can, you know, sit on the beach in the virtual beach in Decentraland. Let's talk gaming. Solana, NFT News Insider has this story here, Zach. Move to earn. Players are rewarded in this NFT game for staying active. So instead of play to earn, instead, you get rewarded for taking part in physical activities. I like to move it, move it. Geno Pets, G-E-N-O Pets, is uh, the digital NFT spirit animal of this product. Users get rewarded in KI tokens, which help evolve your pet, alchemize crystals, generate new habitats, and in battle. So it's kind of Tamagotchi-ish. You're, you're looking after your pet, but you have to look after yourself to look after your pet. 
it sounds a little bit like Pokemon Go and Pikmin Bloom, except instead of merely harvesting your personal data to sell off to God knows whom, you are earning real value for uh, for not only using the app and engaging in physical activity, but it, I'm not sure. It, I would be curious to know whether they also sell user data. That is something I would like to know. Right. Now, I have to take a little aside here because the story here caught my eye. Um, the The sandwich that I miss from being on the mainland is Quiznos. And don't get me started on Subway or Jimmy John's, inferior in every way. Quiznos came up with, mmm, toasty, and then all of the rest of them copied it. Let's toast our sub. T Quiznos takes one small step into the NFT galaxy with the launch of the out of this world sandwich tokens via crypto.com. Wait, I'm on crypto.com. How do I get an out of this world? Did I miss it? It was, it was yesterday. I need my phone. I bet I missed it. I'm, I'm, I'm still on team freaky fast. <laughs> I don't even know what this is about. All I know is that I want a, a sandwich NFT. And I guess there's a chance to win a Quiznos gift card. Um, but I can't use it here because uh, apparently, guess what? Uh, if you are in Denver, which is where I just came from, you can now pay with Bitcoin at uh, Quiznos locations in uh, Denver, including at DIA. So you can try this, Zach. When you, uh, when you fly back, Go buy the Quiznos and see if you could buy a sandwich with Bitcoin. I, I am not making a Bitcoin transaction happen for a Quiznos sandwich. Because <laughs> that sandwich could end up being like a $500 sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, Bitcoin goes <laughs> where, we, where we think it's going to go. Okay, so here, you know, we referenced earlier big news in the WAX space. And William Quigley, you know, the founder of WAX is out there beating the drum. For wax he has been visiting with partners and they have now secured relationships with um with with funko and hasbro and mattel the hot wheels brand and today was the launch of the uh, the hot wheels nfts of which i did not get any in the primary market because my credit card was declined for reasons unknown but they did sell out pretty quickly and um wax is killing it and the price is showing it. In fact, I should pull up Coin Gecko here. Well, let's take a look at the chart because you know I've been telling people about Wax forever. It is now number ninety nine on CoinGecko.com. Current price almost eighty one cents. And look at this chart. Let's just go to thirty day chart. Okay. Oh my uh, god. Thirty days ago it was twenty seven cents. It hit as high as eighty four cents and is currently sitting at eighty one sense so people who have hodled their wax are being rewarded by the way this all-time high here is wrong that is old wax that was the erc20 um, wax that they had four years ago before they did the swap it's never the new wax p has never hit 277 but if it does there will be some celebrating going on okay they're killing it in the wax ecosystem wax is killing it i mean partnerships with these uh, these toy companies is a big deal and they're all tying their nfts to virals right virtual and real life connections that there's certain items that are super rare within the nft collection that allows you to open them and redeem for uh, for something reals Right. If you find a golden Hot Wheels token, you can redeem that for a meat space uh, die cast model, which is acquirable only through that golden token. You really like saying meat space. It's a really fun term. Meat space, meat space, meat space, meat space. Meat space. It is fun. I would actually, so I did not get any in retail sale. I did pick up some on the secondary market and uh, we're still 45 minutes out from being able to open. I bought four packs on the secondary and I'm going to open one because I want to experience it, but then I'm going to hodl the rest of them. I mean, this is the first Hot Wheels NFT release ever. Uh, tell me that these aren't super rare already. Go ahead. Tell me, try I don't believe I'm not going to. In fact, I'm planning on uh, huddling my packs for a very long time. Mm. Um, you know what? I don't want to cover the sports ball, so I'm skipping this next story. Sorry. Screw sports ball. 
Yeah, screw sports ball. I am going to talk, however, though, about a project that came our way, which uh, I just I had to love. It's called Satoshi's Girls. They're a collection of unique, original, powerful girls on the Ethereum blockchain. And what's special about these is each one is hand drawn. So these aren't generative. There's only 500 of them. I got one, Zach. You've I think you've got one in your wallet as well. And um, they're they're fun. And each girl has a unique personality and a story to tell. And I, I love that they're that they're hand drawn, right? That each one is is crafted. And I love that there's only 500. I think this is the part where I'm supposed to mention something about non fungible titties. Yeah, I think you just did. Yeah. Uh, so the roadmaps here, I believe that you can still go out and mint them directly on uh, Satoshi girls dot co but they they do have uh, quite a roadmap it was founded by a couple there's only 500 in the total supply there's some big sales apparently happening on the primary and secondary market and they're not even done minting yet which is really unusual and their roadmap um, is bringing satoshi girl nft utility to life with custom apparel for owners and pretty soon they'll be on rarity dot tools so we like the art satoshi girls.co is where you can go and check this out and there's links to the official open c on here let's see what the floor is on these right now playing nft dress up is definitely a new concept 0.04 eth is the floor for one of these uh, bitcoin babes right now let's see what the the one that's at the bottom here right she needs to get off the floor get off the floor she's about busting out here her bust is busting out this one's this one's wrecked She's got a wrecked tattoo on her. Like R-E-K-T. -E of course. How else would one spell it? The locks on this one. This one's kind of bad. We can spell it correctly, but uh, that's that's the internet speak. So, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of saying go support independent NFT creators uh, because they need your love too. Now, you're a fan of Gorillas, right? The band? Somewhat. I like some of their music. Mm hmm. So apparently a group called Kingship has um, is going to be represented by the same manager that represents Snoop Dogg, but all four of them are going to take on the likeness of Bored Apes. So I guess I'm assuming they either own these apes or they um, they got the permissions to use them. But this is how Bored Apes are moving into culture very gorillas like uh, they they actually are kind of i mean they're apes they're not gorillas i love how they picked out the name because obviously it's because one of them has a crown and the other one's uh, got an admiral's hat a naval admiral captain whatever king ship king ship there you go one of them is a mutant yep. and this looks just like a sailor sailor ape. that's why you see he's got a reason to be bored <laughs> yeah he, he spends his time swabbing the poop tech i just be a seaman not a seaman a seaman get it right by the way speaking of snoop dog i picked up on open sea you got you have to see this um leading the way into the sandbox is uh is snoop dog he's got his own property there and there is only only one thousand snoop dog private party passes for the sandbox here um that's it there's there's only 1000 ever and i had i'm not even a snoop dog fan i had to buy one i'm like this uh, when, when the nft like public wakes up and they're like wait there's only 1000 of these uh, I think they're going to go for top dollar. This is not financial advice nor investment advice, but I bought one. I bought one at 1.3 ETH. They're currently um, at 1.69 ETH. So the price has gone up about a thousand dollars since uh, since I bought. And you can see the chart right here. Is this party taking place in Decentraland? Uh, no, Sandbox. It's a Sandbox. sandbox. Yeah. All right, so listen, if Snoop passes you the booth in the sandbox, you have to smoke it. That's the law. I guess. I mean, I, I don't I don't know what the, the terms are. I just know that that it's happening and metaverses are happening. And I'm gonna stick by what I said. 2022 is the year of play to earn. 
People are slowly going to be moving into metaverses. And it's not that metaverses aren't going to grow in 2022. They are. It's in 2023 that the media latches onto it and it becomes a real big deal. Um, and Animoca doing the same thing. K-pop is moving into the metaverse and Animoca is, uh, is going to lead the way. I don't know what a K-pop metaverse is going to look like, but I'll probably personally want to avoid it. Thinking it's probably not for me. Not, not a huge fan of that musical space, but I have a feeling that they're going to set more than one precedent in the course of establishing this. Mm -hmm. And Animoca just has a knack for coming up with partnerships that are going to be huge. And so I think that, uh, you know, something to keep, keep your eye on. They're partnering with a Korean record label, Cube Entertainment, and they're going to make this K-pop metaverse. So... I guess we'll know when that happens and we'll probably cover it here. Uh, now, Zach, a little earlier today, we had the opportunity to conduct an interview with Super Doge himself because he couldn't be here for the show when we were recording it. But uh, we want to play that for you guys right now. Here is Super Doge. One of the three of us are not what we appear to be. It's me. Don't say. I'm actually an alien. That's <laughs> everything else here is completely normal. Zach's normal. Super Doge is normal. Not me. I mean, have you seen this hair? It's How come you never told me? Yeah. Well, now, you know, you're the son of an alien. <laughs> you never suspected that I was from another planet. Really? See that this was the wrong one. Mm. <laughs> so uh, we have with us right now the one and only Super Doge, uh, Super Doge, the animated series is coming your way with nfts top notch professional stuff maybe you heard the episode of the bad crypto podcast where we got to feature super doge because sir lord travis wright and myself are advisors and zach is on the creative team and we thought we'd bring him to the uh, the nft space here on the nifty show as well so super doge welcome good sir uh thank you guys for having me it's good to see you again the talking shiba just delights my heart. <laughs> he looks so happy. <laughs> he does. I noticed that no matter what the emotion in his voice is, the, the sheep is, is just grinning ear to ear. I mean, if you guys listen to the podcast, that's great. We're glad you listen, but you're totally missing out on the visuals here. So make sure you go to nifty.show forward slash YouTube for the visuals as well zach you're uh, you're working with these guys i'm gonna let you lead this lead like a, a summary of the project what we're doing yeah host the show here we go sure <laughs> the super doge io is sort of a multimedia project because it is uh, not just one token but a trio of tokens that are all based off of the three main characters of the super doge animated series which would be uh super doge hollywood and lemmy now the point of the animated series is that we wanted to touch on this this sort of cultural point where we are making the commentary that is already in everyone else's heads in the crypto space so we're we're taking this wild west world that we have um, in meat space and translating it to this near future fiat city where Super Doge and his band of pups are doing battle against the evil Fiat Cats who have dominated the entire society, structured it in their favor, are not playing by the rules. And Super Doge is a superhero because he is wielding blockchain power through the infinity bone that was granted to him by Satoshi. And this show is built to be full of humor and irreverence and a little bit of education uh, so that there is still some opportunity to share it with your normie friends and teach them a little something about blockchain and why they should care about it. Hmm. Super Doge, what say you? How excited are you? We are so excited to be a part of this adventure where we're able to you know, inject comedy into the crypto community, which is so much fun to do because there's so many things to make fun of. Um, luckily, we have a star-studded uh, cast, in including Zach, who's a writer and director on the show. 
We also have Dimitri Villard, who is an uh, old school Hollywood legend that built our, our uh, he, he did Flight of the Navigator back in the 80s, which is just a cult classic. Um, he did Jim Carrey's first movie, which was absolutely, uh, you know, another legendary thing to do. And, uh, you know, he knows all of these wonderful people in, in Hollywood. On top of that, we have um, Adam Gillad, who is our, our lead writer, who's Emmy nominated and used to work on uh, on Gargoyles, the animated series, if you remember that back in the 90s, uh, X-Men, the animated series, VR Troopers, uh, RoboCop, the animated series. He was, he was all over the place. And we have, you know, Alex Rotaru, who's, a, who's an award-winning writer and director that comes from a long lineage, a Hollywood family in, in Eastern Europe. And uh, Teddy Saunders, who's also a, a very accomplished uh, writer, award-winning uh, writer and director. And of course, Zach, you know, who's just a creative genius that uh, has been an instrumental part in the creation of blockchain heroes and uh, Draco Dice and so many other cool things. So um, on, on top of that, we got Crypto Wendy, who's actually our kind of celebrity guest star, who's doing the voice of Lemmy. And she's been just an absolute pleasure to work with. Uh, the whole team is having so much fun with with what we're doing, and yeah, to to build a a cartoon with such a a wonderful and talented cast of people has been an absolute pleasure. And NFTs are coming, right? I'm showing here for those who are watching the visuals: the Hollywood, the Super Doge, the Lemmy. There's there's a bunch of different NFTs that I'm seeing here. I see a, a collectible avatar NFT. I see the um, uh, the variations common through legendary here of these, and um, you can see the airdrop cards with rewards. So, kind of walk us through what's happening with this. Sure. So uh, NFTs are a big part of our journey. Uh, so is charity. So that's kind of at the heart of our entire mission. Is uh, we've we've donated over four hundred and thirty thousand dollars to charity since we launched in April, which is such a a uh, wonderful accomplishment for our community and something that we're very grateful and proud of. Uh, our goal is to get that to a thousand by the end of the year, a thousand BNB, which will be around 750, somewhere around there, depending on the markets. <laughs> but on top of that, we do have a, uh, a Super Doge NFT collectible. And this collectible series is dropping on the 1st of December. And with the collectible, it actually gives you access to the Doge House. And in the Doge House, you're going to be able to vote on the creative direction of the show. You're going to be able to play arcade games that have been uh, completely uh, built uh, based upon Super Doge. And will also be featured in the animated series. So we'll have tournaments where you'll be able to... Uh, to play for the high score and whoever wins is going to win prizes. Uh, we also have a graffiti board where you're going to be able to, uh, the community will be able to color a pixel in every 15 minutes, which will create a piece of art, which will then be also featured in the animated series. It'll be in the Super Doge headquarters on the wall and it will change every episode depending on, uh, on, on what's been drawn. Um, also some behind the scenes stuff there as, as well as a, a very unique compounding reward system. So um, on top of that, we have the free NFT uh, collectible that anyone watching the show is going to be able to, to come back to the website and mint their own 3D voxel metaverse ready character where they can go into the metaverse of Super Doge. And that's our thanks to, to the community for being a part of the Super Doge adventure. Uh, another NFT series that we're also releasing is the Rookie Card series. And this is an event that is taking place actually in four days. And there's only 125 of these rookie cards that will ever be created and a hundred of them are airdropped to the top 100 sub dog holders if you have a super doge nft you actually get a free nft from both the super doge the lemmy and the hollywood collection and you also get a hidden superpower that allows you to vote on the charity selection process so every every time uh every three months 
the community selects which three charities they want to support. And if you have the Super Doge rookie card, you get two votes. So it's, it's got that hidden superpower, very limited supply. And the only way to get it is either through some sort of wonderful promotion, like the Nifty Show, or you have to be a top 100 sub dog holder. In, in four days, we'll be taking a snapshot and airdropping to the top 100 holders. Uh, we, we also have a charity card collection as well, where you're able to buy an NFT collectible to support your favorite charity. And all proceeds go directly to the charity wallet. So that's something that's very unique about our project as well, is that we actually work with our charities to set up wallets for them. And then we smart code, we, we hard code their, their address right into the smart contract. So all of the funds go directly uh, to the charity through an API swap process that takes place with pancake swap. So they're actually getting BNB. So they get BNB, it's spendable, it's liquid right away, and it can go right into the hands of, of those that need it most. That's fantastic. Uh, so are these charity NFTs available today? They're not. They will be available by the end of the month. How, well, will okay. there be a set amount for them or is it like a donation and, and uh, whatever you want to donate, it goes to the charity? It, well, we haven't uh, figured out the exact details, but what we'll likely do is put a set price on them and you can buy as many as you like to support your favorite charity. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we'll be giving a pile to the Nifty Show as well to distribute to your users so they're yes. able to join us on the adventure. We love piles of NFTs. <laughs> we love stacks and stacks. And here's the thing. All of this is backed by a token. Supdog is, is the token. And uh, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because Supdog has been mooning. Yeah, we launched Super Doge Supdog back in April of this year. And we had a, a very strong start where we hit about a $13 million market cap. And then we went deep into development mode. It was, it's actually quite difficult to, to build a cartoon. I didn't realize how tough <laughs> it was going to be until we got into it. But we now have a team of six animators. We've got, you know, five Hollywood writers who are absolutely uh, amazing. And, um, uh, over the, the last few months, we've been putting all of the pieces together. We did a full character design. We essentially created this Super Doge universe. And we sat down and wrote some, some really great episodes that we think will uh, poke fun at the crypto industry and also highlight some heroes in the industry simultaneously. And as we prepare for the release of the first episode on the 25th, so in eight days, we'll be dropping the first episode of the Super Doge NFT animated series, and everyone's starting to get excited as we see the price climb from about 1.5 million at the start of November to we hit around uh, 21 million during a, a run up, and we've consolidated back down to about 12.4, and we're anticipating to see some some more interest as the in the project as we release the series. We got the decentral. Con, uh, conference at the end of the month, as well as the NFT launch. So a lot of exciting things coming up. So Zach, you also provided the voice for the first episode for one of the villains. Is that right? Yes, I was the surprise voice of the Mad Catter. Um, in all of the production, it was uncertain whether I was going to be voice acting. And then I pulled an audition just completely out of thin air that uh, the team seems to enjoy. Can you give us a taste? Okay, hold on. I have to like prepare. Getting character. Yeah, Getting character. He's a method actor. Are you sure that's wise, Super Doge? You know you have no chance against me. <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. So fun. <laughs> uh, Zach hey guys, was so good. He was so good. I just got to toss good. it out there. He was he a natural. Good. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, voice talent. And, and as we said on uh, a bad crypto, hoping that uh, Sir Lord Travis and myself get to make a, a cameo in an upcoming episode. Because absolutely, I can we have I, the ability to do this voice. <laughs> Which one? The one Just the you're normal hearing. No, no, right I, now. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can do many voices. What kind of voice would you like? Would you like the Russian voice? Perhaps? 
Absolutely. Yeah, we we definitely got to get get you on. Uh, you and Travis would be hilarious as a, a cameo character in the show. That's that's the wonderful thing about the series is that we have the ability to bring in all sorts of different people, different meme coins, different characters, and have them be a part of you know this this hilarious kind of it's it's kind of skit comedy, right? So it's it's a lot of fun, and anyone can get involved. Go do your own due diligence, gang. We are all in on Super Doge. Superdoge.io is the website. I mean, and look at him. He's so cute. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> SD, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, we're going to look forward to big things. Can't wait to see this first episode. Thank you guys for having us. It's always a pleasure. I got to confess, when Travis and I first talked to these guys, it did not look like this. And what, it, what it looks like now is amazing. I'm so excited about this series. Yeah, it's, it's come a very long way. I'm very interested uh, in what they're doing that's never been done before because I, I've never seen a token that was based on a fictional character, never seen a, a group of tokens that were based on a cast of characters. It's a very unusual concept. And I, I enjoy the promising roadmap that they've put together. And that's why I have faith in the project just, uh, just outside of being both a contributor to the show and uh, a contributor to the show, since I'm both a director <laughs> and a voice actor. <laughs> well, hot on the heels of that, this news just came out. Space Dogs partners with Super Doge to provide private on chain self custody so oh, the dogs space. what's that i said poor space dog but that's a spoiler you'll see <laughs> so some, okay something happens to space dog uh so the dog's wallet and space card hard wallets are going to be deployed somehow via the super doge community in uh, quarter one of 2022 so Super Doge will be able to store their digital assets with private on-chain self-custody. And of course, hard wallets uh, are the, uh, the best way um, for secure offline cold key storage. That way your keys aren't online. You're the only one that has them. And even uh, if somebody were to have all of the info, but not have the, uh, the key to your wallet, which should be in your brain, then uh, they can't get in. They can't steal your cryptos. Super important for securities. Very cool. I actually did not know that that was happening. Yeah. So uh, we've been having some discussions here um, internally about this particular show. Uh, and it's because it's growing very quickly. We are seeing um, YouTube videos are up a little bit, but the listens, the downloads up significantly. And at the same time, we are getting hammered by projects, people uh, that want to be project people that want to be on the show. They want to talk about their projects and starting to wonder if the long format and the live show is the best way to get this information out to people. So I did a poll, an informal poll yesterday on the Twitters, and uh, this was just a general poll. How long do you prefer YouTube videos? The vast majority, 47.6 people, 47.6% of people said seven to 10 minutes is ideal for them, followed by two to four minutes and right behind that 15 to 20 minutes. And the, the least number of people said 3.2% was 3.2% uh, was 30 to 60 minutes. Now, my next poll, now this is for YouTube videos, and Nifty is, is very visual, even though many of you listen. My next poll is going to be how long do you prefer your podcasts? And I'm going to do the same um, minute span on this. And I want to see what people say in terms of listening, if they like quick listens, or uh, if they prefer, you know, longer form, because we're looking at perhaps breaking down the Nifty show into smaller segments. And what do you guys think of that? Uh, write us and let us know. The Nifty Show at gmail.com is our email box. Don't spam us, please, because we don't like spam. And we don't want to spam you back either, because that wouldn't be nice. What else you got, Zach? Anything? Uh, no, nothing at all. Okay. Do you want to try for the fifth time to end the show? Right? or Keep it spiffy. Damn it. One of these days, you're going to learn to keep it nifty. <laughs>